over the past half century, the Aeronautical System Center proudly established the standard for acquisition excellence. It acquired, modernized, and sustained the Air Force's aerospace systems and armed its combatants with the world's finest airborne weapons and equipment. The story began on April 1, 1961, when the Air Force activated the Aeronautical Systems Division, or ASD, at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and assigned it to Air Force Systems Command. ASD combined the Air Force's aeronautical research and development, systems engineering, and acquisition production and procurement into a single unit. It was responsible for researching, developing, and acquiring virtually every aircraft introduced into the Air Force inventory since its establishment. In its first decade, ASD delivered the C-141 Starlifter, the SR-71, the C-5 Galaxy, the HC-130H for military rescue operations, the RF-4C reconnaissance aircraft, and the F-111, the first production variable geometry wing aircraft. ASD personnel also worked on the XB-70 Strategic Penetrating Bomber. The division conducted pioneering work on the X-20 Dinosaur, a proposed reusable space vehicle. Although the program was canceled in 1963, the Dinosaur Project eventually aided NASA in developing the Space Shuttle. Among those testing X-20 prototype cockpit and spacesuit designs were astronauts Gus Grissom, Wally Schirra, and Neil Armstrong. In the 1960s, ASD also provided critical support for the Vietnam War. It established a special limited war and special air warfare organization to quickly respond to combat requirements and evaluate new hardware. Its hundreds of rapid response programs range from developing tactical electronic warfare systems and guided bombs to modifying cargo aircraft into side-firing gunships like the AC-47 and AC-130 Spectre gunships. The 1970s saw rising procurement costs and DOD abandoning its policy of buying weapon systems as completed packages. ASD reacted by reorganizing the acquisition cycle into five phases, conceptual, validation, development, production, and deployment. Notable achievements during the decade were the deployment of the F-15 Eagle, the F-16 Fighting Falcon with its fly-by wire control system, the A-10 Thunderbolt, the AGM-65A Maverick missile, and the AGM-69A short-range attack missile. Other systems developed in the 1970s included the B-1A bomber and pioneering work on stealth technology. The division's 4950th test wing, activated in 1971, added the advanced range instrumentation aircraft to its flight test mission in 1975. Araya was a high-speed, highly instrumented aircraft that could acquire, track, and record signals from launching and returning orbital vehicles and ballistic missiles. For its work in the 1970s, ASD received two Air Force Organizational Excellence Awards. The 1980s found the division refining, upgrading, and modernizing existing systems while procuring new ones. It also expanded when it reacquired the Wright Aeronautical Laboratories in 1982. Notable activities included fielding the F-117A Nighthawk, the first operational stealth technology aircraft, the B-1B Lancer, the KC-10 Extender, the HH-60G Paypock helicopter, and the AGM-86B air-launched cruise missile. ASD began modifying its fighters with advanced avionics and to incorporate the low-altitude navigation and targeting infrared system for night, or lantern, and carry the advanced medium-range air-to-air missile. Design and development got underway on the C-17 Globemaster III, the T-1A Jayhawk jet aircraft trainer, the new presidential aircraft, and the advanced tactical fighter that would become the F-22 Raptor. The division also returned to hypersonic research with development of the X-30A National Aerospace Plane. These endeavors helped the command earn its third Air Force Organizational Excellence Award. The decade of the 1990s brought substantial mission and organizational changes to the command, including a new name. First, in 1990, management of the Munitions Systems Division's acquisition programs and the Air Force Armament Laboratories Technology programs were transferred to ASD. In 1992, 
ASD was redesignated the Aeronautical System Center and assigned to the newly established Air Force Materiel Command. At the time, the 88th Air Base Wing and the Wright-Patterson Medical Center were assigned to ASC, bringing those operations into the ASC mission portfolio. The next year, the recently gained armament program offices at Eglin Air Force Base were reassigned to the new Air Armament Center, while the Human Systems Center at Brooks Air Force Base was redesignated the 311th Human System Wing and assigned to the Aeronautical System Center. The systems developed by ASC played a crucial role in Operation Desert Storm, the Balkans Conflict, and Operations Northern and Southern Watch. These systems and expanded capabilities ASC added in the 1990s gave the Air Force a stunning technological superiority. In 1994, the center's program offices began operating from the newly opened James Doolittle Acquisition Management Complex, and its major resource sharing center became home to one of the DOD's four supercomputers. New aircraft fielded in the 1990s were the B-2 Spirit, the C-17, and the VC-25, the new Air Force One. ASC managed the acquisition of three new trainer aircraft. The first new training aircraft procured by the Air Force in 30 years, the T-1A Jayhawk and the T-3A Firefly entered the service while the Joint Primary Aircraft Training System aircraft, designated the T-6A Texan II, made its initial flight in 1998. The C-32A and C-37A Executive Transport Aircraft replaced aging BC-137s, and the last C-27A Spartan Intertheater Airlifters entered service. Several C-135 airframes were modified to the OC-135B configuration to support the Open Skies Treaty mission, and the F-22 Raptor progressed from the drawing board to flight testing. Most striking, however, was deployment of the RQ-4 Global Hawk unmanned aircraft system to the Balkan conflict. Although still under development, it played a major role in ending the conflict and securing the peace. The talks that produced the Balkan Peace Treaty were held at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in November 1995, with ASC and the 88th Air Base Wing serving as the host organizations. These achievements brought ASC three more Air Force Organizational Excellence Awards. The new millennium brought more organizational changes and the end of the command. In late 2003, the Air Force designated the ASC commander as the Air Force Program Executive Officer, or PEO for aircraft, to consolidate program portfolios around larger mission groups and improve program accountability. To increase ASC's focus on programs, the 88th Air Base Wing was designated as the base's host organization, with the Medical Center as one of its subordinate organizations. Two years later, the system program offices were replaced with standard Air Force wings, groups, and squadrons. The experiment ended in 2010, when acquisition management reforms drove ASC to restructure into directorates, divisions, and branches and PEOs for Agile Combat Support, Mobility, KC-46, Fighter Bomber, and ISR were designated. Amid these changes in 2001, ASC found itself supporting the global war against terrorism and Operations Noble Eagle and Enduring Freedom. Operation Iraqi Freedom soon followed. As in the Vietnam War, the center responded quickly to requirements for new weapons, technologies, and capabilities. Most significant were the development of armed unmanned aerial vehicles that could pinpoint targets and successfully deliver airstrikes with little chance of detection. The RQ-1A Predator, equipped with Hellfire missiles, was hastened to the battlefield. Later in the decade, the larger and more powerful MQ-9 Reaper made its combat debut. To support reconnaissance missions, the MC-12W Liberty aircraft was quickly acquired and deployed. The center also continued its traditional programs. It deployed the F-22 Raptor and CB-22 Osprey tilt rotor aircraft. It also supported the airborne laser testbed and the F-35A Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter program which entered flight testing. It transformed the B-1B from a nuclear bomber into a conventional strike platform. And in 2011, a contract was awarded for a new tanker, the KC-46A.
ASC worked and produced thousands of other programs and products over the years. The center developed and acquired simulator and propulsion systems, ejection seats, parachutes, a host of support equipment, and electronic systems for targeting, electronic warfare, reconnaissance, and other combat functions. Its work included resolving aging aircraft issues and the design, testing, and procurement of Air Force uniforms. The center continued managing upgrades to multiple legacy systems, including the AC-130U gunship, MC-130 Combat Talon II, the C-5 and C-130, and the venerable B-52. Good relief. From troops, to technologically advanced weapon systems, to training simulators, the Aeronautical Systems Center provided comprehensive combat capability to the nation and its allies and coalition partners. ASC received its seventh Organizational Excellence Award in 2011. In addition to these awards, the accomplishments of the center's dedicated personnel over the past half century were also recognized with the Collier and McKay trophies, the Arnold and Theodore von Karman awards, and the Dedalian Weapon System Award. The final test of ASC's achievements over the past 51 years does not rest with the awards received or accolades accrued. Rather, it lies with ASC's ability to provide the nation and its Air Force with the armament and aeronautical systems that have enabled global reach and global power whenever and wherever needed. Based on that standard, the Aeronautical Systems Center has been an overwhelming success.